Good day. So I wanted to uh, do a video here uh, to share with you guys a dirt system. In other words, to take and transform your food waste into a very powerful fertilizer for your garden. And uh, some of you might know it as Bokashi. However, I've put my spin on it tried to simplify keep it super simple so what i'm doing now is i've started i've taken the leap to start my own worm farm i'm testing actually experimenting and testing um this process so that everyone can uh, do it in a similar fashion so the bokashi system is done with these home depot buckets and i've even uh, went as far as sharing a different process of using not the gamma seals but these other seals these seals right here i've got three uh what i'm proposing is that people get at least two these are double the price of gamma seals but they're air escape that's what they're called and when you push on this they allow the air to escape and we place them inside and push down and what it does is provides a seal and to take it out you just pull it and lift it and let me just quickly uh, briefly explain how this kiss dirt system works how bokashi works you fill this with uh, waste as you're going along i usually use a little container and uh, we put bokashi brand which i show you there's other videos that i got showing you how to do that and as we're doing this we're always sealing it because this is an anaerobic process and what it does is the bacteria multiplies it feeds off the, that food it ferments in other words so once it's ready then you bring it down as it is like this like i have mine in my kitchen I bring it down and then i let it sit for two more weeks fermenting once that fermenting is done, then I put some shredded cardboard. How it works is that you're going to put halfway here of the Bokashi. And I put a liberal amount of cardboard, pretty much the same equal amount. Uh, and I'm testing this. I want to put less. And one thing I noticed right away was that I, I didn't smell that. There are other ways to do this, like a soil factory, but I'm using the simple method whereby you utilize cardboard, especially with these Amazon boxes, readily available. So strictly cardboard and food waste. I know there's a lot of people doing these worm farms, going out and buying stuff to feed them. It doesn't really make sense. When I was younger, I looked into a book that's called Harnessing the Earthworm, and it intrigued me how well they duplicate and how much they consume. So here I am, I'm sharing a method which I'm experimenting. So this is not tested yet. And in that video, if you haven't seen the video, it's a short video where I was smelling in the bucket. And what I was smelling actually was like an ammonia smell. That's never a good smell. So remember, we've got Bokashi waste that has been fermented for two weeks. After two weeks, you're supposed to take this and throw it outside in the garden or mix it up with some soil as a soil factory in your house. Uh, but I didn't do that. What I did was grab cardboard and put it on top. And so one thing that I noticed it was a okay was that there was no smell. That was awesome. I didn't want any smell so the smell was retained so i wet this cardboard it wasn't dry i wet the cardboard and i put it on top and i let that sit essentially for two days when the worms came then i placed them on top and then i covered up the worms with you know uh just anything like this an egg carton or some cardboard or whatever and then a piece of uh, plastic just to keep the moisture in and then i covered them with these tops so that the worms can't get out. Lastly, I used a light, like this light right here, okay? Just to keep them over top for the first 48 hours so that nothing happened. It's already been 72 hours, so the worms haven't escaped. The smell, there is no smell. I see some of the worms um, have died on the top. They're very thin when I got them. They didn't look really fat or mature. Uh, so this is the 72 hour update. Point of the matter is why I took out the gamma seal parts of the buckets and this is my new system now is because once it's fermented you simply take it out put the worms inside and then cap them like this and i also cut just above the ridge there's this little ridge i've cut just above the ridge so it's easier to put on and you just snap it on this is if you're worried they can't come out we're testing this but they'll have to come up from the bottom, 
slide and then make their way up top. It's not going to happen. So all you need for this system, what I'm trying to develop here, experimenting, is two of these buckets, okay? You need at least two of these airscape, and then you need the process of making your brand, etc. And so this is truly what I believe the best way to harness the earthworm, in this case we're using red wigglers, to get rid of food waste, not to go out and buy stuff for them to eat. They'll eat up the cardboard as well. They eat up paper, shredded paper, but I'm using cardboard and food waste. So this is the experiment. I'm just going to show you right now. I'm going to end this right now, but I'm going to show you where these worms are at. And I'm also going to show you this next level version of the worm farm, and I'll show you why I've done it this way. Okay, so here are the worm buckets. Again, halfway filled with bagashi, and then the rest is with cardboard. You can see, nothing to see yet. This is an experiment, we're testing it out. One thing that they love is eating bacteria, micro, and the bokashi is full of this. I tried it this way to see if the timing is accurate. In other words, once it's done fermenting, put some cardboard, put the worms, let's see how it works out. Now what you see here, is what I've built. I'm going to go and measure this I, for you so that you can <clears throat> build it yourself. Basically a ladder system. In the in these, I just water this. You can see how it's set up. Okay, and there's the cardboard all soaked up. In these are simply uh, cocoons. Okay, and I have 10,000 cocoons in this one, this one, this one, and this one four of them. The cocoons will hatch within a month, okay? And you could go from 10,000 worms at least to 20,000 worms or even more. Again, experiment. I've got some heat mats as well with the hatching, but in about 24 to 30 days, these things will hatch and they'll be tiny little worms. So there's like 22 to 4,000 worms in each of these. One, two, three, four of them. And I've got, like I said, that amount. Also, you'll see here that I uh, made a, a worm farm as well, a different handcrafted worm farm. I'll show you that one in the future. This is the area right here where I'm working. And uh, basically, yes, yeah, so I'm showing you how you can do this in greater scale. But I'm also showing the, the person that has just a simple little outfit, what, how, what can they expect. Even if you're in an apartment, you can do this, okay? So that's my two cents. I'll keep you guys posted on how this works out. Um, I think I will have success, but it might not be the first time, okay? Again, the point is to take your food waste, convert it, ferment it, uh, put some worms in it, and essentially all you got to do is make sure that it's uh, wet and moist. And that's it. Let them do their job, and this will turn into worm castings, which is uh, incredible stuff. Then you can spread that in your garden as well, and it'll help out. So I'll keep you guys posted.